Welcome back. Hello. How are you? If you're new here, my name is Steph. Welcome to my channel. If you're a regular, then you know who I am. <laughs> anyway, I wanted to jump on and talk about some things that I have learned from Marie Kondo. And I think like everyone else, you have probably been watching the new series on Netflix called Tidying Up with Marie Kondo. I know I have been, and to be honest, I knew about the KonMari method a little while ago. I'd actually seen a lot of it on YouTube. She did bring out a book a few years ago. I think it's called The Magic of Tidying Up with Marie Kondo. So I will leave a link to that book below. Um, just for you to check out if you're interested. I actually haven't purchased it or read through it, but I have known about the method, but I didn't know the finer details of it until I started watching these series. But I wanted to share with you some of the things that I've really taken out of the series and just my knowledge on the actual method. I thought it would be nice to share that with you. So I'm going to dive straight in. And the first thing is obviously the whole thing around sparking joy. I absolutely love that. Now, if you have been following a little while, you would have noticed that I've been doing a lot of decluttering and purging my physical space and my digital space, online space, and my mental space. And I've absolutely been loving it. Originally, I did call the series the minimalism series, but if you watched my previous video, I will link it above here for you to check out, you will notice that I actually didn't want to label myself that. And that's not to say that I also want to label myself as a con Mariaist, if that's even a term that is going around at the moment. I don't think it is. I just made that up. Um, but I love the whole message of just keeping what brings you joy. And the second thing is that I really noticed or came to realize that everyone is on their own journey and whatever that means to each person individually is absolutely fine. So what may bring joy to someone may not bring that same joy to someone else. And I really realized this with my own, like I found I was being a little bit judgmental at the beginning when I was watching people decluttering. When she first walked into their house and I'd sort of look around, I'd be like, whoa, they have so much stuff. And then there was an instance where I caught myself saying when Marie came in at the end and they decluttered everything and they were kind of like, well, not, they hadn't gotten to the end, but they were doing something. And I just remember thinking, oh gosh, I would have told them to get rid of that. And I realized I was just being this rude, judgy person. And I just, you know, gave myself a slap on the wrist and was like, don't do that. And that's when I kind of realized that everyone is on their own journey. So for me, for example, if you saw my major kitchen declutter, you would have noticed that I had a bit of a debacle where there was one cup, there was one mug that did spark joy for me. But for me, I'm also quite a bit of a realist or a bit factual. So whilst it did make me happy, I also thought about, well, is this actually useful? Like, am I going to use it? I probably was going to use it, but does it make sense to have more coffee cups? And it didn't to me. So on my journey, I feel comfortable in being able to remove that from my space. Whereas some other people are more inclined to hold on to more stuff. And that is completely fine as well. Everyone is on their own path. Each thing that brings joy to someone is going to be completely different to someone else. And that's what makes human beings so beautiful is that we are all unique. The second thing that I really learned from her was her appreciation and gratitude towards things. The first time I saw her like kneel down and greet the home, I was just like, oh my gosh, that is so lovely. And Marie, if you've watched it, she is just so cute. She's so adorable. She's just the type of person that you just want in your life. <laughs> and yeah, when I saw her kneel down and she greeted the home, I just thought that's really amazing. And I've kind of taken that on to just being more thoughtful in when I am giving something away, whether I'm selling it or donating it, that I'm actually thankful for what it did bring into my life. And even when I'm folding things, so when I was folding my sheets for the linen cupboard the other day, I actually took the time to do it. So instead of like rushing through it and it kind of looking like a little bit of a mess, I took the time to actually properly 
like lay down, well not lay down, I laid the sheet down, I kneeled down and I folded it up with care. So you would have noticed that she like folds things very delicately and she always like smooths it out. And I've started to take that method within my own practice when I'm starting to, you know, fold linen or my clothes or anything. And I just feel like that just brings a whole new energy of gratitude for you and the things that you have in your life. And I just love that. And that leads me into her folding technique and not even her folding technique, but more of her storage technique. So when she does her clothes, she folds them in the way where she stands them upright. And I didn't understand why she did this. And when I was watching YouTube videos of this process, I was like, why would you do that? And then when I found out it's so that you can get a good visualization of what you have available to you, I was like, ah, oh, mind blown. And you can apply this to all different methods. So I actually did this with my linen cupboard and I also have done this with other areas as well. So when I'm storing something in a box, I don't pile things on top of one another because then that way, when you pull that box out and you're looking for something, you physically have to move stuff to be able to see what's in there. Whereas her method of having like everything at the same level, I suppose, uh, that way you can open it up and you know exactly what's in that particular storage area. And the final part that I really enjoyed was decluttering in categories. And I actually used this method, not a hundred percent, but mostly during my own decluttering journey, which is still going, might I add. So make sure you do subscribe if you want to follow along with that. But just the, the method of the way that she does things, I totally understand. So the way in which she declutters are uh, set in these following categories. One is clothing, two books, three papers, Four is kimono, so that's like miscellaneous areas. So these could be like your kitchen, your bathroom, your office area, kids' spaces, cleaning products, decor, your garage, pretty much anything else that hasn't already fit into one of the previous categories. And then the final one is sentimental items. And I totally understand why sentimental items are right at the end. It's because you can go through the journey and you start to get more of a feeling as to what actually does bring you joy. So instead of like trying to, you know, target the more challenging items where you just want to keep everything because it actually means something to you, you get towards the end of having that more, you're more intuitive in regards to how you feel about certain objects and what's joy and what's not joy. And so I totally understand that. And that is the process that I've been following in my own journey. Now, if you haven't watched the series on Netflix and you do have it available to you, then definitely go check it out. I feel like it's really inspiring and motivating for you just to do a massive like detox of your entire life. And I can vouch for the feeling of just freeness and amazingness, <laughs> not that that's a word, but just the joy, I suppose. I think joy really, that word, whilst it's funny and there's heaps of like stuff going around about whether certain things spark joy in your life, I think there's one going around where there's a meme that says something about um, Marie talks about only keeping what sparks joy and it's like getting rid of your, your pants and your job and all this kind of stuff. So it's definitely a topic of conversation at the moment going around on the online world. And it's a good one to be getting that much attention because I think the overall message and just the journey in doing that for yourself, you're just going to feel absolutely amazing. And like I said, just free. That's the feeling that I feel. And it just allows you to open space for more and bigger and better things that you want to attract into your life. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, give it a thumbs up and leave me a comment below and let me know if you have been watching this series and which one was your favorite episode. Anyway, I will leave it there. If you are new here and you're not yet a subscriber, I would love for you to be a part of my online family. So I will leave a link for you here if you like, or you can hit that red subscribe button below. And until my next upload in another few days, I'll leave a couple of other videos on this side for you to go check out. Take care and I will see you very soon. Bye.